What's up YouTube? One of the most challenging aspects of street photography is uh, the light condition that changes as you move from scene to scene and you having to continuously change your exposure or adjust your exposure. In this video, I'm going to talk about my basic exposure settings and how those settings allow me to quickly change my exposure to match with the varying lighting conditions. So the purpose of this video is not to teach you about the exposure triangle. There are a number of resources already available on YouTube. If you do a quick search, you will be able to find a huge number of videos dedicated to that purpose. One of the videos that I recommend is a video done by Sean Tucker. So I will leave a link in the description below if you want to check that out. Um, he has great content on his channel. He's been one of the biggest inspirations that I had when I started my straight photography journey. So as we move through this video, I'm going to talk about exposure or correct exposure and uh, how your creative decisions come into play when you think about exposure and then histograms, a very important tool that you can use on the field when you're trying to see whether you got the right exposure. Uh, and uh, on top of that, uh, we will be talking about some of my basic exposure settings. Now, I am going to talk about these exposure settings in the context of my camera, the Ricoh GR uh, 3X. So, uh, but if you are not a GR shooter, you can still use this content because uh, some of these topics that I am talking about are uh, camera brand agnostic, I would say or uh, uh, camera body agnostic for that matter so you can use this knowledge first let's look at exposure photography by definition is the art of drawing with light and exposure is the amount of light that you will allow to fall onto the film or the sensor of your camera almost all the modern cameras allow you as the photographer to have full control of exposure. As we move through this video, we will discuss the benefits and the drawbacks of having that level of control. If you want to learn more about the term exposure, uh, there is a link down in the description below pointing to a great article from the Adobe Creative Cloud. Achieving correct exposure is one of the fundamental topics that is covered in any introductory level photography course. Let's dive a little bit deeper into the term correct exposure. Uh, this portion of the conversation is going to help you with your creative decision making when you're doing shoots. And I'm going to use histograms as a tool uh, to explain some of the points that I'm trying to make. If you are at the early stage of your journey as a photographer, it is most likely that you would identify a photograph that is evenly exposed throughout as a correctly exposed image. The arrow is pointing to the histogram of an image considered to be evenly exposed from edge to edge. So does that mean that the rest of the histograms are examples of poorly exposed images? The answer is most certainly no. What if you as the photographer decide to have more black in your image or more white in your image? In both those cases, the histogram would be completely different as you can see in the diagram. So that means all of the above histograms are examples of properly exposed images. So the next question that you might have is, how do I know that my image is properly exposed? by looking at the histogram. This is where your creative vision as the photographer comes into play. If the photograph that you want to create has more dark areas, that means your histogram when it's properly exposed would have a heavier end towards the left. Similarly, if the vision that you have is to create a high contrast image, that means you will have a reverse bell curve. This is why being able to read a histogram is an essential skill for a photographer when they want to nail the exposure every single time that they take a photograph. So when I go out for a street shoot, the images that I want to create usually have an edge-to-edge -edge even exposure. 
that means the histogram that those images should have somewhat resembles a bell curve like you see in this diagram. This is especially true for the images that I capture during daytime. If you want to learn more about histograms and exposure, there is a great article published by Theme Photography Daily and uh, I have uh, put the link in the description below if you want to go and check that out. Since we now know what correct exposure looks like for my creative vision, let's look at how we can achieve that with basic exposure settings. As I mentioned earlier, I will not be going into details of how the exposure triangle works. Instead, I will quickly share the exposure settings that I use and spend a little bit more time on sharing the thinking process that goes into deciding which value works the best when I'm doing a shoot. Let's start with ISO. It is usually the easiest one to decide. The lower the ISO value is, uh, the better the quality of your image would be because of uh, the noise uh, that would get added as you go on high ISO values. But uh, that being said, uh, I usually shoot on ISO Auto uh, going all the way up to 6400 on my Ricoh GR uh, cameras. This allows me to focus more on the remaining two aspects of exposure, uh, namely shutter speed and aperture. It also means that I could easily move between scenes without worrying much about my exposure settings. Next in line is the shutter speed. I start with a 125th of a second. It is usually enough to freeze the motion of people in a crowd. If my image feels overexposed even at the base ISO of 100, shutter speed is the first thing that I would bump up to achieve the desired exposure outcome. On the other hand, if my ISO is maxing out at 6400, then uh, if my image is still underexposed, the first thing that I would bring down is also my shutter speed. The only exception to this is when my creative direction for that particular image is about either freezing motion or capturing motion. In that case, I would be thinking about adjusting my aperture to uh, set my exposure. I usually start with an aperture of f5.6 for my daytime shooting. This aperture value allows me to have a balance between subject separation as well as enough depth of field to capture most of my scene. Most street photographers do not like to uh, blow the foreground or the background into bokeh oblivion because they want to have some information to show the context of the photograph that is being taken. This again is nothing but a creative decision that suits well with my style of street photography. This also gives me enough depth of field to comfortably use the snap focus function of my GR if I want to use that on the street. If you want to learn more about aperture values and the effective depth of field when you are using snap focus function in a GR camera, there is a great article that you might want to read. I have left a link in the description below for your reference. Now that we looked at the three basic exposure settings, let's talk a little bit about how these settings allow me to be nimble and quickly adapt to the varying light conditions on the street. Since I have set aperture and shutter speed values manually, the only other attribute of the exposure triangle that the camera can control is ISO. However, that does not mean that I as the photographer have no control over that. Basically, I can use my exposure compensation to easily add more light or take light away from my image. This means I can easily let the camera help me with the basic exposure most of the time but quickly take control over the exposure uh, as and when required. So that was a lot of information. Uh, before we end this video, I have one last important message to share with you. Uh, but before that, let me uh, ask you a quick question. Did you enjoy this content? 
This is a little bit different to my usual content where I do POV style of videos where I take you to a uh, field scenario and show you how I frame that and I show you my exposure settings and I walk you through that. This is different. Um, I want to know what you think of this video. Uh, please share your thoughts uh, in the comments below. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to my channel. That would be a great help to keep me motivated to make more videos for you. Um, and if you have any other topics that you want me to cover during my future videos, again, leave a comment. I will get to them and I'll see how I can incorporate them into my um, future upcoming videos. Um, and uh, let's get to that important message that I wanted to share with you. Uh, Street photography is an art form, so there are no hard and fast rules and there is no right way of doing things or wrong way of doing things. It's, it's a creative decision that you have to make when, we come, when it comes to the exposure. So that's very important to have in the back of your mind. The information that I shared today, use them as a guide. I hope that will help you in your journey as a street photographer. And until I meet you in my next video, thank you.